Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If we have an infinite series from 1 to infinity and I want to represent its value geometrically, what I might do is to make each term a rectangle that is one unit wide and make the height of each rectangle whatever the value of each term is. So if my first term is 1, make the rectangle one unit tall. If the second term is a half, let's say, make the rectangle a half a unit tall, etc. If I draw a function through the top left corners of my rectangles, this starts to look like something we might have seen when developing integrals. Integrals, right? This is what you would probably would have called a left-hand sum. Because this function I'm showing here is decreasing, you can see that the left-hand sum obviously is going to overestimate the area under my function. If we look at a right-hand sum, the decreasing shape means that my right-hand sum will always underestimate the integral. If we return to thinking about this as a series though, what we might notice is that if we take the left-hand sum and just move everything over one rectangle to the left, we get the right-hand sum, just with the first rectangle missing. Since we know the value of the integral will be somewhere in between these two sums and one term is not enough to change whether a sum converges or diverges, we know our infinite series big picture will do whatever the integral does. So if the integral converges, then the series will converge. And if the integral diverges, then the series will diverge as well. So let's make a formal statement of our integral test here. If we have an infinite series that it has positive terms and the series itself is decreasing, and we can represent it by a function starting at some point in the series and forevermore, and that's a nice, well-behaved, continuous, smooth function like the one that went through the corners of my rectangles. Uh, then we know that the infinite series and that integral from some term to infinity will both converge or they both diverge. They'll do the same thing. So what we'll do is make a decision with our integral test. We'll make a decision for whether our series converges or diverges by using an equivalent integral of a function that has the same explicit formula as our series. A couple of quick things we want to point out. The overall behavior is the same of the series. So if the integral converges, the series will converge. If the integral diverges, the series will diverge. But they do not have the same value if they converge. So if you do the integral test and you find that the integral converges to the value 7, that doesn't mean that your series adds up to 7. It just simply means that they have the same overall behavior. If this converges, then this also converges. If this diverges, then this diverges. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that we have an infinite bound in our integral if we are doing an infinite series. So the integral in our integral test will be an improper integral. We just want to make sure that you're aware of how to do limits with bounds and that you're comfortable with improper integrals to do the integral test. Looking at our first example here, we want to determine whether this infinite series converges or diverges using the integral test. So I've got the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 2, and I want to imagine what would happen if I turn this into a function with an equivalent formula 1 over x plus 2. So the first thing we want to check for, is this a continuous function on my interval 1 to infinity that I'm doing my series sum from 1 to infinity on? Is it continuous? And yes, it is continuous on that interval 1 to infinity. It is discontinuous at negative 2. It has an asymptote there, but negative 2 is not in the realm of what we're considering plugging in for x, if we think of this as a function. Uh, we also want to make sure, are these positive values? So if I look at this and I plug in values 1 to infinity, 1 and then 2 and then 3, etc., getting bigger and bigger, uh, we should still get a positive value. 1 over a positive would be a positive. And is this decreasing is something else that we want to check. So think about if we plug in larger and larger values for x, for n, then 1 over this thing is getting smaller, right? So yes, it's decreasing as well. So it fits all of the criteria we need to do the integral test. So we set up an integral from 1 to infinity, my same bounds here, of 1 over x plus 2 dx. And I say that whatever this does, big picture, converges or diverges, my original series will also do that. But one thing we said about our integral here, 1 to infinity, is that it's going to be improper. So we might replace our infinite bound with something like a dummy variable b and say, what is the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 to b? 
of our one over x plus two dx. Remember that infinity is not a number we can just plug in and do arithmetic with. We need to think about approaching infinity. So this integral is not so bad here. So remember we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity. And we'll be looking at the antiderivative you can get by u substitution is just going to be the natural log of x plus two. That integral is a natural log rule from one to b. And if we plug in our bounds, then we will get the limit as b approaches infinity of the first thing here, which would be ln of absolute value of b plus 2. And then we'll go ahead and subtract. When we plug in 1, we'll get ln of 1 plus 2, which is just 3. So ln of 3 is just some number. So the converge or diverge part remains right in this first term here. So does this first term go to infinity as b gets larger and larger without bound? And the answer is yes. If I take the ln of a larger and larger value, think about ln of n, for example, that's logarithmic growth. This will grow infinitely large, so we'll have some infinite amount uh, minus some constant, and of course that's going to diverge, right? So if we go ahead and say that this integral diverges, then I will know for sure that my original series also diverges by this integral test. All right, our last example here, we have the infinite sum of 1 over n squared. If we think about converting this to a function of x with an equivalent formula, 1 over x squared, and we want to make sure that it satisfies all the things we need on our interval. So first of all, is this continuous on 1 to infinity? And it is. It is discontinuous at 0, but 0 is not in our interval that we care about. So yes, we're good there. It's continuous. We also want to know, is it positive? Does it have all positive terms? And as we plug in positive values for x, we will see, yes, we get positive terms. And is this a decreasing function? Think about it, as we plug in larger and larger values, as n gets bigger, as x gets bigger, we get a smaller and smaller fraction. So yes, it's continuous, it's positive, it's decreasing. So we can go ahead and use the integral test. For our integral test, we'll go ahead and use the limit as b approaches infinity. And our integral will be from 1 to b of 1 over x squared dx. Now this is just a power rule. We can think of this like x to the negative 2. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's look at the limit as b approaches infinity of the antiderivative of this. So the power would go up by 1 and then I divide by the new power. So the power going up by 1 from negative 2 would make it x to the minus 1. We'd also get a negative. So the antiderivative here is negative 1 over x. And then we'll evaluate that from 1 to b and look at the limit as b gets larger and larger. Okay, if we do that, then we'll have the limit as b approaches infinity of the first term, which would be negative 1 over b, minus, if I plug in 1, I will just get negative 1 over 1, right? So what is the limit as b approaches infinity? Well, the limit of this first thing here is 0. So we actually get 0 plus 1, and that just gives us 1. So of course this converges, right? And so if this integral here converges, then I also know that my original series converges as well by the integral test. They will have the same behavior. All right, our next video in the series, we're going to show you a way to maybe avoid having to do the full integral test on a lot of these infinite series. It's a shortcut called the P-series test. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.